New research has identified security and appropriate oversight as two of the most important features customers want to see in their payments platforms. Convenience has also been highlighted as a major consideration consumers take into account in this 24-hour world. They're expecting an always-on working payment system. Well, the findings are from the State of Pay report, which was published by Vocallink, which designs, builds and operates the UK payments infrastructure. And joining us now to look at this in more detail is Gregor Dobby, who's the CEO of Vocallink. So welcome to Cyboss TV, your first time here. So congratulations on making it. But look, tell us about Vocallink and, and more specifically your role as Chief Executive Officer. So um, good morning. So Vocallink uh, in the UK is we are a technology infrastructure provider that enables services out to UK consumers and small businesses, including the majority of salaries are paid through Vocalink systems in the UK. Uh, ATM transactions are facilitated through Vocalink and the majority of state benefits are facilitated through Vocalink systems. Um, so it's probably quite unusual for companies to actually say that if their services were not reliable and were down, they could literally cause riots in the street so people would not be getting paid their salaries, etc. Mm. So that's quite a, a responsibility which I take very seriously indeed. Yeah, someone's got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, you've, you've got a huge footprint in the United Kingdom, but just to put this thing in context, you are also very active internationally. So can you tell us about uh, some of your recent activity in other sure. corners of the world? So the first thing I would say is that from a, a payments perspective, the UK is and remains one of the most innovative markets in the world. We have had the ability to move money in real time for now 11 years. And what essentially we're doing as a company, as being now being part of the MasterCard group, is actually enabling that uh, elsewhere. So in the last few years, we have uh, supplied software to the USA to enable real-time payments to Thailand, to Singapore, and more recently this year, we're now involved in projects in Peru, Philippines, Saudi, and I could list mm. quite a number of others. But I would say a lot of it is based on our heritage here in the UK mm. and what the UK market has achieved over many years. Yeah, so it's, it's very exciting. Mm, so you're not really focusing on one one region of the world. It's, it's, no, it's we're, all we're over. There are no boundaries in terms of yes, what you well, do. Yes, one of the fantastic things, having been acquired by Mastercard in 2017, is that they are a truly global company. Whereas Vocalink was very much UK and and out, and therefore we we now have the the opportunity to to utilise Mastercard to distribute everywhere. Mm. And I mean, the key to this, of course, is resilience. So how important is the concept of resilience for a company like yours? Resilience is everything. Um, consumers and users of systems ex simply expect and deserve payments to work uh, as a minimum. We put enormous amount of focus on resilience to the point where we, talk, we use the term um, thoughtful innovation, which basically is two factors in payments. Number one is, you know, if you're making an innovation in payments, we believe that if you actually have to teach someone how to use that new payment innovation, you've failed. It has to be completely intuitive. And the second one relating to resilience is that if it will in any way compromise existing resilience of systems, then we will not deploy it. Uh, resilience is absolutely everything. Our reputation is built on resilience. And it, you know, it's even moving money around in real time makes resilience even more important. Mm. And with the you know social media, and I always joke with my my uh, colleagues that you know you never get a you never get a tweet saying I've just successfully moved money again. But believe me, if you don't successfully, you'll have an avalanche of mm. tweets. So so the expectancy, rightly so, is that it works. And we, you know, resilience is top of my mind. It's top of my board's mind. It is absolutely everything. Mm. I referred to that research which you did, the state of pay, in my introduction. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the findings that emerged. What were the things which really stood out in your mind? There was a, there was a number of findings. Um, the first thing we did with the research, actually, is we took it around the country. So it wasn't just London. So we, uh, we conducted research in London, Bristol, Leeds and Edinburgh. And one of the first findings was that there are considerable geographical differences in how people want to pay. Um, and therefore, our job is to provide choice. Um, 
you know, for example, where I live uh, near Manchester, mm. I need cash to pay for taxis, whereas in London you don't. So, so geographical differences was, was one of the findings. The second finding uh, that was really quite intriguing was the emergence of the challenger banks. So we found that one in 10 new bank accounts in the UK were being opened with the challenger brands, so Monzo, Starling, Revolut, etc., and the list goes on. And that was quite a significant step up from, we, we conduct the research biannually, mm. so that was quite considerable growth from previously. But the interesting thing was they tended to be second bank accounts as opposed to primary bank accounts. So I'm really intrigued over the next two years to see if that trend shifts. Um, another trend we found was we looked specifically for the first time in the research at the over 75 demographic. We decided that there's huge amounts of research into millennials and their behaviour. We decided to go to also include the other end of the scale, the over 75s. That was quite fascinating. It, it really surprised me. Um, it, it, that category are very comfort comfortable using internet banking, mm. but they don't use apps. Oh. Uh, so it, it was quite interesting. Mm. So, yeah, the research for us is really, really useful. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating what emerges in terms of the, the relationship that some people have to the cash. As you, you gave the examples in of the taxis in London. You don't necessarily have to pay for it with cash, but you may in another part of the country. But given that you've got so much feedback, which reflects a, a variety of behaviours around money and payments, how do you actually respond to it? So, it, you know, consumer research uh, and user research basically is the cornerstone of our innovation strategy. You know, we, we develop according to what the market needs. The other, you know, a couple of things on that. One is there is a danger with innovation that you can innovate and exclude certain parts mm. of society. So cash is, is, a, is a common one where... Digital refugees is what they're often called. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, th and there are elements of society who still want to use cash, yeah. and, and that should not be taken away. Mm. Um, so we, we use the research to actually influence heavily our innovation strategy, but also to look at what choices mm. our users actually want sure. to be able to make. So this makes, makes you in many ways a connector to, to different groups in society as well. Some of the people who perhaps wouldn't normally feel that we've got anything in common with some of the services. And here you are saying, well, actually, look, we need to know what you, what, what you think, what you do if we're to serve you better. Absolutely. Um, and there's considerable now, uh, regulator and govern government attention around access to cash. It's a very topical debate and it's something we can support through our systems. Mm. And also as well, the company announced that it's launched a new confirmation of pay solution. Take us through this and, and describe how it works. So essentially there has been considerable research in this area around uh, people using internet banking or app banking to make payments. And often there are mistakes made when people are setting up a new payee. Mm. So it's someone they want to pay and they perhaps mistype uh, the bank account number, for example, and the money then is sent off to the wrong place mm. and it becomes quite cumbersome to actually yeah, to recover it. To recover it. Mm. And also there are quite uh, considerable illegal activity in this space about people influencing and incentivizing people to send money to the wrong place, which sure. is just lost in the ether system. So the, the service we have uh, developed, which we're actually going to announce today, um, actually looks at making sure using sophisticated analytic tools that the money is actually going to the logical right place. Mm. So, yeah, it's quite an exciting development for us. It is. And, and who is it targeted at, this, this solution? It is targeted at the um, essentially anyone who's using... Uh, real-time payments to move money. Mm. So consumers, small businesses, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. And I mean, it's a great example of customer-facing innovation, but also as well, there's a lot more to the company than just looking at payment systems. There's also analytics and anti-money laundering space on behalf of banks and financial institutions. And certainly the vibe, just talking to people at Cybos, this is absolutely key to what a number of companies do. So what can you talk to us about that? Because it, it is so essential. So I, I've now been at Focaling nearly five years and the thing I am most proud of is the developments we've made in the area of actually uh, helping with social need. Mm. 
mm. in terms of protecting consumers because like everything i mean it, i used to work in banknotes sure. and there was big counterfeit activities in banknotes and you know there is illegal activity going on and what we've done with our analytic business is actually to help identify suspicious use of bank accounts which could be for money laundering purposes so we actually look at a data feed of how money has been moved around the ecosystem mm. we then home in on bank accounts and highlight back to the banks um, where um, bank accounts have been used suspiciously mm. mastercard uh, has, a, has a slogan doing well by doing good which i absolutely endorse and mm. i think this is a great example of doing it it also highlights as well that innovation should not just be restricted to things that the customer can see there's, there's a a lot of innovation which mm. is actually to the customer good but they perhaps don't actually yeah behind know. the scenes yeah. stuff effectively yeah so they perhaps don't actually see it or touch it mm. so you you are the eyes and the ears of the banks yeah so we we work with our banking partners to actually better equip them particularly when money leaves a bank to go to another bank uh, we can actually track it through the network and actually say well actually that is going to a suspicious bank account for all these reasons and we can give a risk rating mm. and then the banks can act on that information sure. and, and deal with the, the bank account. So yeah, it's, as I say, it's the thing I personally am most proud of. Mm. And you've every right to be proud of this as well and also the fascinating research which you, which you brought up here with us earlier in the interview. But look, thank you so much for joining us. You have a presentation today, so good luck with that. Thank but you very much. Greg Ordovi, CEO of Vocal Link, Thank you for joining us on Cyboss TV and enjoy what's left of the event. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.